need you to pray for me. Yeah. I need you to care for me. Yeah. I need you to want me to win. I need to know where I'm headed because I know where I've been. The book is really about fear right. and overcoming fear, isn't right. it? And uh, I just keep thinking fear can be quite good. You know, I don't, I don't want to stop. My, I don't want to stop myself doing silly things. You can have a slight paranoia that helps you be aware of situations, and even in the 40. Eight Laws of Power that Robert wrote, there's some things in there that you might feel like are evil, but you need to be aware of them because someone else's intentions might be very well what that law of power is. You know, so like when, when I got a chance to talk to him, we even brought it down to the perspective of a person that's in a, a staff meeting that won't, is watching someone else raise their hand to answer a question that they never answered to. And that means that person deserves to be ahead of you in life because your fear of being wrong at that point is not allowing you to create your value in the workspace. The book is really based and recounts your experiences of hustling and selling drugs in Southside, Queens. Uh, and you can draw lessons for business in the staff room from that really completely different world. The, the boss in the neighborhood doesn't see killing someone as rule, it doesn't rule killing someone out as an option to expand business. When uh, in corporate America, I've interacted with people that absolutely have intentions of killing the competition in a different way. It's just not literally killing right. us. It's yeah. Have you overcome fear? I mean, you were famously you were shot nine times in the year two thousand. In terms of dealing with fear, I suppose. You're not scared of anything after that. Well, when you're in life-threatening situations, it makes you a little more conscious of death. You know, and the more that you are aware of your fate, the higher the probability you have a chance to live. So you're a little more free. Like, I, I go into what Robert kind of identified as the core of my power is me being in business situations and being the person with the least fear at the table. And that's because I weigh these things up against my biggest losses in my life. So like the loss of my mom is the biggest thing that I've experienced. So walking into a room, even at the worst possible uh, scenario, it won't damage me to the point or hurt as much as that hurt it. So I go in there in a secure space able to speak and ask the questions. And I'd rather be, feel like I'm unaware for the moment within that, those quarters than to feel like I'm unaware in a losing situation. I mean, the book does describe some fairly nasty incidents. I mean, just in the chapter about the Hustler King, uh, you slash the face of a rival's um, assistant who's out to hurt you. Um, I mean, looking back on all of that, I mean, how do you sort of feel? Because you've just moved so far away from that now. Yeah, it, it, I did. But, you know, like, I think the things you go through make you who you are. So I don't regret those things. I don't regret them because I don't think I'd be who I am today if I wasn't exposed to those situations. If you ask me what I, uh, those are unfortunate situations that I've had to experience. And if I had a choice, I would have definitely went in a different direction. I might have went wanted to go to school for business instead of having to go through that this portion of my it life. But, tough lesson, yeah. Yeah, but under those circumstances, when when you're in an environment where you meet aggression with aggression or you're deemed weak and the weak becomes the prey, you had to kind of back people off for you at a different point. And it really felt like that in, in that... Literally, in they, yeah. yeah. And when you're willing to go as far as further, than the other guy, you, you always prevail. You always end up on top. It's like the kid in the schoolyard that doesn't want to fight always leaves with a black eye because as soon as the other kid identifies he doesn't want to fight, he hits him. But this is back to the this is back to the negative view of human beings. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I never wanted to fight, but kids actually I did get hit at school a little yeah, bit, but like, not very much. But no, when they very... say no, I don't like I don't I really don't want to do this. Pop, that's when you get hit. You just gave the other the other guy enough confidence to hit you at that point. Especially when there's a bunch of kids behind him jumping up and down saying, whoop them. You know, like those experiences from when I was really small, I identify with that. 
So I ain't never been in the space or those situations where even if I didn't want to fight, I ain't shown. And then let's talk about the world of rap, which is a bizarre world, obviously, hip hop. Um, I have to ask you, why you have all these beefs with people? You just get into get position, into man. arguments with people all the time, feuds. What's I going on? Is, the competitive nature of hip hop has always been one of the driving forces, one of the elements in the art form that keeps it thriving. The youthful uh, audience that's attracted to it has a low attention span, so it's always out with the old and with the new, as far as they're concerned. So the guy that, that comes into hip hop music, you know, while we continuously use metaphors for things, I'll use the metaphor of a fighter. Fido going to the actual gym, day two, his coach is calling him champ. Because he weighs 154 pounds, he's watching Floyd Mayweather fight saying, I'm gonna beat Floyd Mayweather one day, or I'll be as good as Floyd Mayweather. When he doesn't even know how to fight at that point, he just begins his training. You know, and rappers psychologically are like fighters where they condition themselves to believe they're as good as the guy that is in position at that point. So I'm constantly challenged. They come prematurely and I damage their careers because when you compete with an artist that has a higher consistency than you, they match you up against that artist, the public, and then you just dwindle away. But I'm in more fuse than the average artist because I'm more vocal. I generate more interest. And I'm obviously in a uh, a space with that they'd actually like to be in. See, when the director yells cut, none of my things go away. The big house is still there, the nice cars are there, the attractive women are there. When he yells cut to them, everything goes away. They write the life that they aspire to have, and I'm writing the struggle. 